Fast raw viewer. It's fast. It's raw. It's not exactly just a viewer. Let's launch FRV and drag and drop a folder from the hard drive onto the program window. Now, we can see a lot of panels surrounding the first image preview. Let's close them all by pressing Tab and begin from the beginning. For now, we are interested in the program's core functionality, which is fast and reliable culling overall. Is it really fast? To check how fast FastRaw Viewer is, let's do a simple experiment. Place your finger on the spacebar and see the images fly in front of you. See? It really is fast. Try it for yourself. For the purposes of our speed demo, we're using a 5-year-old notebook with a modest SSD drive. Of course, if you're working from a slow external hard drive or a flash card, the speed may not be this fast, and you may need to go to Preferences, Performance, to tune it up. Is it raw? If you toggle the J key, you can see the image view changing. Why? because the image preview is also toggling between the raw display and the embedded JPEG. If you shot in raw plus JPEG, the external JPEG preview will be the third in this toggling group. But how can we prove that it's really raw that we're looking at? Let's have a look at the histogram. Press H. We know that raw data is not white balanced, contrary to an embedded JPEG. What does this mean in terms of a histogram? Let's place the histogram here, scale it a little bit, and change its opacity so we see everything clearly. It means that for the raw data, neutral areas will be represented on the histogram as three separate peaks, one in each of the RGB channels. Usually for the daylight, G is rightmost, then B, and R is leftmost. If you're curious, try shooting indoors and outdoors, avoiding overexposure, and see that for incandescent light, the right slopes of red and green are very close, while the blue trails behind significantly. It is underexposed. While for the daylight, normally blue and red are both to the left of the green. Conversely, for JPEG, all three of these peaks will be stuck together because that is exactly what white balance application is for, to make neutral areas appear neutral. Out-of-camera JPEGs are rendered to some working color space, sRGB or Adobe RGB. In such synthetic RGB working spaces, you are assured that a color is neutral gray when all three values are equal, to quote from Adobe. Real device color spaces seldom have this property of being gray balanced. On a side note, if the white balance setting in camera is significantly different from the light in scene, you will see the channel peaks diverge in JPEG. The more the difference, the more the channel peaks are separated. You can easily check this for yourself. Make a raw shot of some neutral surface using appropriate white balance setting in camera. A gray card or a white ceiling will do. Open the shot in FastRaw Viewer, open the histogram panel, press H, and toggling J, look how the histogram changes, not only the header of the panel. Now it is groups of three separate peaks. Now all three peaks of every group stick together. How else can we prove that we're looking at a raw histogram? To experiment, take a series of shots of some simple scene changing the white balance for every new shot. Open the series in FastRaw Viewer, go through these shots, and see how the raw histogram never changes, given the exposure settings in camera are the same and the light in the scene doesn't change much. Well, it's known that changing white balance presets will not affect raw data, and, consequently, the raw histogram will not change. As for the embedded JPEG, the situation is quite the opposite. 
Both the preview and the histogram will change in accordance with changed white balance presets. If we apply different white balance presets in camera, we will see that the JPEG histogram changes, while the raw histogram stays the same. Here's another experiment in the same vein, except this time, we shot with the same white balance and are changing the white balance in Fast Draw Viewer itself. Notice that however we change the white balance, the preview changes, but the raw histogram stays the same. So, what we see in Fast Draw Viewer is what we got in camera. We're presented with the display of a raw shot and a real raw histogram. Fast Draw Viewer. It's fast. It's raw. It's not exactly just a viewer. Fast Draw Viewer lets you not only browse raw shots, but make reliable conclusions as to their quality. Why do we need to deal with raw when calling raw shots? We get this rather puzzling question a lot. Why do we need to view raw shots at all? The JPEG is perfectly fine for me. Honestly, this always befuddles us a little bit. Would you pick a spouse based only on a picture? I honestly wouldn't recommend it. Henry VIII tried, and we all know how that ended. However, some people are honestly confused about all the differences between viewing RAW and viewing JPEG. So, let's try to figure out why we need to see the RAW histogram and the RAW-based over and under exposure statistics and indication while calling RAW shots. Well, on the one hand, the answer is quite obvious. It's much better to be able to evaluate explicitly what you are sorting, rather than try to come to the conclusion about the original based on some rendition of it. It's highly possible that you've been rejecting higher quality raw shots in favor of those of lesser caliber only because the JPEG preview happens to be better for that raw shot. In other words, selecting by JPEG previews, we're judging the raw by its shadows. Let's show you what we mean. There are two main approaches photographers use for culling. Some photographers use viewers, sometimes advanced ones, to choose keepers, and after choosing, they work with these keepers using a raw converter. Here we should keep in mind that the majority of viewers, upon ingesting raw, simply extract the embedded JPEG from the raw and display it out alongside its JPEG histogram. So in this case, the decision of keeping or rejecting a raw shot is based on evaluating the embedded JPEG and its histogram. This is not sufficient. RAW is open to interpretation, and a JPEG preview is only one of the possible interpretations, created automatically and rarely the way you want it as an end result. Or you would be shooting JPEGs to begin with. Technically, when converting RAW to JPEG in automatic mode, the highlights are made lighter, causing false overexposure alarms, the shadows are made darker, creating the wrong impression of details being absent in the shadows. This means that when culling based on embedded JPEGs, one may find oneself stuck in suboptimal exposure practices. Let's consider a variation of the above approach. Suppose one is using Adobe DNG Converter to convert all of the files into DNGs, or is simply importing RAW files into Adobe Camera Raw. With this workflow, the JPEG preview embedded by the camera is replaced by an Adobe generated preview. This preview too suffers from interpretation. The application of a tone curve and white balance results in a histogram that does not reflect the raw data, and may exhibit premature clipping on both ends of the histogram, highlights and shadows. Culling with such previews, you may throw away the jade and keep the brick. Please note that an out-of-camera preview and an Adobe generator preview are markedly different. Which one is more adequate? We will follow with a demonstration that both are not good enough for the purposes of culling. Both an embedded JPEG and an Adobe generated preview are just weak shadows of the original RAW, and neither possess the flexibility of the original RAW. Judging the quality of a RAW shot based on the quality of its embedded JPEG or Adobe generated preview is like, to follow Plato's allegory, being a resident in a cave and making a conclusion about different objects placed behind one's back while being able to see only their shadows on the wall in front of them. In our next video, we'll show you just how much an embedded JPEG 
or an Adobe generated JPEG can trick you when you're trying to pick one shot out of a series.